Hello everybody, this is Ananya and today we will be covering the topic nested if statements in conditional statements. So let's get started. What do you think uh, nested if statements basically mean? In case you have an idea or maybe you don't, let me tell you. Nested if is having if inside if. You have a if statement. You write some code or maybe you don't, does not matter. And then inside it you have another if condition. Okay. So one if inside another if or you can also have else if some condition saying else if and then inside that you have another if. Now what do these exactly mean? Why should we have uh, so many if inside other ifs? What happens is sometimes we need to check multiple conditions if a certain condition is true. So if condition 1 is true, I want to make sure that a few other conditions also pose to be true. Then I shall say, okay, fine, I'm satisfied now. In case you're confused, let's look at this example. We had previously taken this for uh, elif statements, okay? We have ice cream is equal to chocolate here, okay? fine I'm happy I'm, I'm, I love it if the ice cream is chocolate flavored but I shall love it more if it includes a chocolate disc along with it now how should I do this I say if ice cream is equal to chocolate so if it is true it goes inside the if condition now it will check if includes is equal to equal to chocolate disc okay so if the chocolate ice cream includes a chocolate disc only then will I love it else it comes to say then maybe I have to buy chocolate cookies after all my luck will not let me have a chocolate disc chocolate ice cream okay so you know this that if this if condition turns out to be false it will directly go here also if this if condition is also false or let's say chocolate is true but this is false it will again go and print this if statement okay you just to ha you just have to have if if and you can have another else statement saying that I don't love it that much okay so this is how ne nested if works we shall look into some practical examples now the first one is about greatest number between three given numbers what we do here is we take three inputs from the user number one two and three now what we check here is number if number one is greater than or equal to number two Okay, instead of just telling you all uh, the logic behind the code, let me just give you a dry run so that you all can understand easier. Let's take the three numbers that is uh, 5, 6 and uh, 9. Okay. We have the numbers uh, 5, 9, 6. 5 is number 1, 9 is number 2 and 6 is number 3. We can look at it, look at it and simply tell that 9 that is number 2 is the greatest number but how do we let the computer do that? Okay. Number 1 is, let's check now, number 1 is greater than equal to number 2, 5 and 9, no. It is 5 is actually less than 9, right? So this if statement Im immediately becomes false. None of this portion will be checked. The compiler simply won't go inside to check all this. It will directly jump to this else statement. Now it will check if number 2 is greater than or equal to number 3. 
that is it's going to check if 9 is greater than equal to 6 is it greater than equal to 6 yes it is inside it it will check another condition that is uh, sorry that happens previously so we have previously checked if number 2 is greater than uh, equal to the first number which turned out to be false so automatically 5 gets rejected okay so if this statement turns out to be true we shall print that number 2 is greatest okay it might seem a little confusing in the beginning but it's actually a very simple logic uh, so I had previously said in the in my last lecture that nested if uh, programs actually help you build a lot of logic okay let's uh, go into the coding part now let's make a new file we shall name it uh, nested if we shall take of the first three numbers number one let's just say n1 is equal to int input enter the first number similarly store it in uh, n2 and n3 the typing part may be boring for you so just please if you need to just skip ahead and but don't skip the entire thing or else you might not understand what is going on okay so let's start checking the numbers now if n1 is greater than or equal to n2 we shall check the next condition that is our nested if if n1 is greater than or equal to n3 so we are checking n1 but both the other numbers first so if n1 is greater than or equal to n3 also you have a use of lot of operators in if else and looping uh, statements so you get a very clear idea about all the operators that you have previously learnt now I wanted to print that n1 number 1 is the greatest if you want you can also uh, just print uh, let's print the number it is more efficient n1 comma is the greatest now now if n1 is not greater than or equal to n3 that is if n1 is greater than n2 but not greater than n3 then what should we do we simply print else we shall say n3 is the largest ok n3 is the largest or greatest whatever same difference ok now if this if condition proves to be false we have to give our else statement that is else if n2 is greater than or equal to n3 we shall say now n2 will be greatest right 
n two. Okay. Else, now obviously uh, n three will be greatest. Let me just copy this and uh, change the number that we'll be printing. That is n three. So we are done with our code. Let's run it and see what we get. Enter the first number. Uh, let's say I want the third number to be to be the greatest. Let me decide it accordingly. So I'll give uh, fifty-six, nineteen, and ninety-nine. There you go. Ninety-nine is the largest. Let's try something else. Uh, Forty, one fifty, zero. One fifty is the greatest. So we're done with the first example. It was pretty simple finding the largest among the three numbers. Okay. Now let's go ahead with the second example. Now the second example is a little complicated because I wanted you all to have a thorough practice about on nested if. Let me just e explain it what the code exactly is about. and then this time I have the code ready for you because this is going to be a long code. and if i sit and type everything for you all it is going to be really time consuming so i will i have the ready made code i shall explain it to you all so that there is no confusion let's start first we shall take the in, this is again a banking operation okay this is an improvised version from the if else code i had mentioned it previously in case you all have not seen it you all can probably go and watch it again or just watch it so we shall take if the user wants to deposit or withdraw money now this entire thing this entire code i shall be running inside a loop now you may or may not know what a loop is in case you all do not loop is basically running the piece of code that you have written n number of times that is until the user wants to stop this code will continue running uh, get a basic idea about how a loop is it keeps on running non stop non stop okay this is how a a loop is i shall be using a while loop so if in case you all don't know please don't get too much confused or break your head on what is while loop now or uh, my next lecture will be on loops so we'll understand then concentrate on the if and else code that i'll be explaining so if it is deposit i shall simply deposit the amount that the user wants to in a, in his or her account otherwise if it is a if it's a withdraw first i shall check that if the deposit is zero that if the user or the customer hasn't deposited any amount and it's rupee zero in the account then obviously the user cannot withdraw any amount so i shall directly go to the else statement and print kindly deposit money into your account okay now let's check another if condition what if the deposit is less okay if it is what if the deposit is less than the withdraw let's say i have 500 rupees and i want to withdraw 1000 rupees that is not possible so i have to print that the balance amount is less otherwise if both these conditions that is if deposit is not equal to 0 and deposit is greater than withdraw it will go inside this if condition and we shall withdraw the amount subtract it from the current amount and display the balance okay if you all want to have a th look at look at it maybe you all need some more time to actually process the entire thing in your head you all could just pause the video maybe try out 
the try a rough code by yourself okay and come back to this and uh, watch how we do the code okay we shall do it together no no issue let's start right now it's a little big but don't get very upset about it i have the code ready for you all oh where did it go um banking here all right okay so obviously we first need the name okay we need the name of the user so i say enter your name next i have enter your account number we took these first two inputs in case the user wants to display his or her uh, banking details okay now what i have done is the variables withdraw deposit and deposit 2 i have initially allotted them uh, the number 0 okay that the banking process needs to start now so initially they are all 0 later on the values keep on changing now choice the variable ch basically stands for choice what i want to say is i want to enter inside the loop considering the customer is here for a banking process and i shall start with the banking actions so i have given while ch is not equal to 0 so i shall since ch is equal to 1 it will go inside the loop okay don't get confused with this let's just dive right into the if else part of it what i want the user to uh, i'm asking the user now is to enter what action you want to perform that is deposit withdraw or simply view your bank details accordingly the user has to input 1 2 and 3 according to his or her choice now choice 1 stands for deposit so if choice is equal to 1 I shall say enter your amount and I'll store it in the variable deposit and I'll also print it. Okay. Now this line you all might wonder why am I doing it? This is basically if you are withdrawing a certain amount, so the withdrawal amount gets subtracted from the current deposit, and then you can display the current balance that is there in your account. okay next if the choice is 2 that if the uh, user wants to d d withdraw an amount i shall say if deposit is not equal to 0 that is we checked in uh, our example right now next i shall say withdraw that in the variable withdraw i shall store enter the amount you want to withdraw okay i stored it now next i shall check if withdraw is greater than deposit what should i say you currently have only this much amount that is the deposited amount in your bank so there is insufficient money to carry out the transaction so please deposit and then come back and withdraw again and then else that is if withdraw is less than the deposit then you have successfully withdrawn this much amount no problem now the deposit 2 variable that i had previously shown you all where i where i had said deposit 2 is equal to 0 in this variable i am storing the balance amount that is deposit minus withdraw okay and then we say the current balance is deposit 2 now what if after withdrawing the customer decides to deposit the amount again now you will understand why have i given this statement here my new deposit amount should be the balance amount plus what he deposited for example uh, let's take i initially deposited 500 rupees then i withdrawed 100 rupees so my current balance is 400 right now i come back to deposit again and i say deposit 300 rupees so 400 plus 300 will then give us 
our new deposit amount that is 700 okay so this was your choice one and choice two where you have clear a clear view of nested if else statements okay and our last option that is choice three we display the name account number and balance amount of the customer now let us run this and see what is happening I have given you all an explanation of it I really hope you all have understood it okay in if you if you haven't you all can just go back and re listen to whatever I have said or also you could pause the video try and work it out by yourself on pen and paper or maybe also try and code it by yourself that will be a great start all right mine let's give the name as xyz not taking any particular name right now next account number let's give one two three four five all right we have our first or uh, we have the options here either deposit withdraw or view the bank details let us first deposit amount i'll press one i want to deposit 500 rupees now i also have an option here saying press zero to exit banking but i don't want to exit right now i want to continue now i want to withdraw amount i'll press two enter the amount you want to withdraw I want to withdraw 100 rupees okay you see that the current balance is 400 okay everything is getting printed properly you have successfully withdrawn and your balance is 400 now I want to deposit again that is 300 okay now see as I had told you rupees 300 has been deposited into your account and the current balance is rupees 700 okay now let's try out another operation we shall keep the name and account number same mm, doesn't matter this time my deposit amount will be let's say 400 rupees and I want to withdraw thousand rupees which is not possible let's see what it gives us see you currently have rupees 400 in your account which is insufficient money so please enter an amount less less than rupees 400 see when you get outputs like this it's quite fun to try out many more different things okay uh, let's view bank details this time something uh, new you have name account number and the balance amount now let's try to withdraw money before depositing let's see if it if it gives us uh, the proper error that we had typed x y z 1 2 3 4 5 I directly want to withdraw okay deposit amount is currently zero as we had done here okay I want to withdraw two I want to let's say 1300 or 13,000 okay see what we get it oh I did the mistake again I want to say two and now I want to say huh please deposit an amount before withdrawing so our code works fine no problem and I hope you all have understood I am not providing you with the source code because I really think that you all should uh, try out the entire code by yourself since I have explained everything to you it will really help you build your logic and it is extremely essential to become a great coder fine then uh, we have done a lot of programs on nested if nested statements also we did the greatest between three numbers and banking operations I hope you all have understood I'll see you all next time with the switch statement in Python for now bye bye 
see you again